This program proudly brought to you by Centibet. No other bookie offers a tote guarantee on your fixed odds bets. Australian racing has some great names and some great families. Today our guest comes from one of those. I'm at the Ramwick Stables and I'm out the front of uh, stable number 20, which used to house the superstar mayor, Emancipation. Today we're spending time with Graham Big. Graham, thanks for uh, spending some time with us today at uh, your Ranwick uh, facility here. Uh, a place steeped in tradition with some great horses being through this place. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Jason Stable's been here just on 50 years and uh, my father trained here before me and uh, you know, we took over when uh, he went to Hong Kong. You were just born into this game. Uh, we've spoken to a lot of trainers on this show and some uh, stumble on it, but for you, being the son of a, of a superstar trainer, was that always what you wanted to do? Yeah, I sort of was always involved in some capacity and uh, I sort of left school when I was 16 and uh, went straight into it and uh, used to do a lot of the travelling from a father interstate. That, those days had a lot of horse and training and yeah. had a lot of very good horses and uh, you know, we'd be all over the place and it was a very good grounding. And, and obviously travelling all the time with your dad, that would have been fantastic for your relationship as well. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, uh, we had some very good horses to go with, so, you know, it made it definitely worthwhile. Talk about good horses to go with. Uh, I just looked at uh, box number 20 over there where all silent is, a superstar has been for you, but Emancipation used to be in there. Just a super, super mare. Yeah, no, she was a great mare and she won sort of seven group one races and uh, I think she won 19 races all up and yeah, no, I used to look after her and that was her box and we actually try to keep the good horses always in that box so um, he's, he's in there and that's he's a resident at the moment. Emancipation, what was her greatest win? We, with so many wins and you mentioned all her group ones. What day did you think that she was at her absolute best? Well, she had some great contests and then raced some very, very good horses at that time in, in, in very good form. Horses like Sadapa and uh, Manicado. She beat Manicado as a three-year-old filly and probably, I'd say, best win, I'd say, would have been when she won the Doncaster as a three-year-old filly. She carried a weight-carrying record. Yes. I think for memory she had something like... Uh, uh, 53 and a half or 54 and a half and you know it's pretty much unheard of three-year-old fillies doing that and she demolished that field and uh, yeah no she certainly gave us a lot of great memories. And Ronnie Quinton rode her in uh, 27 out of the 28 starts they, they were inseparable. Yeah that's correct and um, I think the only other jockey at rode her for a win was Kevin Moses he actually won the manifold honour in Melbourne and uh, so Ronnie had a great association and knew her well and uh, unfortunately she was retired too early. It wasn't due to any uh, ill health or soundness issues or anything like that, it was just a, a decision at the time. She was raced on lease and yeah. the lease had expired and, and the owner at that time decided to you know, call it a day when she went back to him so there was no real reason why she had to be retired so it was, that was disappointing. So many other great horses, Veloso and Heat of the Moment, November Rain, any others that have a special place in your heart? Yeah, we, you know, we always thought that Dalmatia, um, mm. he was a horse that Dad got from Queensland and he was, a, I think he might have been a maiden at the time, but he went through and won the, won an Epsom and also won a Rawson Stakes, which is now the uh, Randvet Stakes and held the track record at Rose Hill for 2,000 metres and he was Bice's Tristram and, and he was one of the early Sir Tristrams, but he had great acceleration. But unfortunately, he was very unsound. He always sort of had suspensory ligament issues. Yep. And he was sort of day to day, and we never really actually saw the really best of that horse, right. and his career was cut short. But, yeah. you know, highly talented horse. What is it with the Begs and their, and their fillies? Of course, we, you know, we mentioned Emancipation, but Heat of the Moment was a super three-year-old filly. And, uh, of course, November Rain won, won three oats as a three-year-old filly. That's right. And getting back to Heat of the Moment, I remember her coming into the stables, the yearling. She was that small, she couldn't see over the top of the door of the box, and I said, jeez, what's this? <laughs> anyway, but she uh, went on from strength to strength, and uh, she actually was just a real sleeper in the stable because she... She raced well as a two-year-old, but then when she became a three-year-old, she really hit her straps and mm. never forget, uh, we took her to Melbourne and she drew an outside gate in the uh, Corf a thousand guineas of Caulfield and Jimmy Cassidy rode her and uh, Dad just gave him the instruction, oh, just ride her kindly, don't chase her out of the gate because she drew sort of 19 gate yeah. or something like that. 
Anyway, she was back second last or something like that in the capacity field. Next thing she stormed home and ran second. Anyway, Jimmy come back in and said, geez, wish you had told me it was this good. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I don't know if he thought he was going to put a bit more effort into it. But anyway, she went on and uh, she, I think she won the uh, wakeful after that and came yeah. back the next preparation. She won a George Ryder and won a Chipping Norton, but it's great filly. Yeah, she was an outstanding filly in the Oaks filly November rain. It's rare for a for three-year-old filly to win not not one, not two, but three of the Oaks, uh, VRC, the AJC, and up in Queensland. Yeah, you don't see it very often these days. And not only that, she also won a, an AJC St Ledger. Yeah. Um, and I think she might have beaten a horse called um, Just a Dash and, and um, another horse called Red Nose of right. uh, Theo Green Train. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty certain they were around at the same time and, and she yeah. beat them. And they went on to race very well in... Um, Melbourne Cups, obviously, with Just yeah. Dash winning, but she was a superstar, and you know she was another one. She was retired very early. Yeah. Um, she didn't race past a Queensland uh, three-year-old year, right. not due to any injury or yeah. anything. Again, um, the owners just said, "Well, you know, she's achieved three Group One Oaks, and will retire anyway." You know, she certainly could have been a cup source. When uh, your dad decided to go over to Hong Kong, got the opportunity to go to Hong Kong, it was no doubt a big family discussion, will we go, will we not go? And you decided to go and to stay here and take over the stable here and go out on your own, big decision? Yeah, it was a big decision. Um, you know, dad sort of got to the stage where, you know, he thought, well, I've done as much as I can do here and, you know, he was looking for a new challenge and, uh, accepted the offer to go there and it opened the door up for me. So, you know, we've sort of never looked back since. Did you take, is your training philosophy identical to your dad's or you've tweaked a little bit over with other experiences you've had? Oh, I tweaked a little bit. It's very hard, you know, um, been exactly the same, but, uh, you know, we don't push them too hard early and mm. we probably always tend to be on the gentler side, you know. You know, we're not hard gallopers of horses and we don't gallop them regularly, you know, two or three times a week, you know, yeah. we just back off them a bit if we need, think yeah. they need backing off. And I'm a great believer also, you know, not rushing horses to get them to the races just for the sake of running them. Yeah. Um, you know, if you can educate them up and trial them and then put them away again, I think they come back. You know, if they go out feeling well, they'll come back in good, good condition. When you started on your own, you started on fire, you really hit the ground running. Uh, the cross of Starway by St. Clair is something you know plenty about, of course, produced Telesto, Fraternity and Bon and Over and they gave you some great results early. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, three full relations and they all won Group 1 races, so that was fantastic. But the uh, starting point was a horse called Eye of the Sky. Yeah. Um, first year of training within the first few months. He went on, uh, I think he won Tats Mile at uh, Eagle Farm, then won the Doombin Cup at Wait for Age. Yeah, it used to be known as the Forex Cup back that, in those that's days. That's right, he beat the horse called Rough Habit. <laughs> he goes all right, I think. <laughs> he went bloody good after that, I know that. He beat a horse called Solar Circle and Rough Habit. So that was first Group 1 uh, win, and uh, yeah, we had some great horses coming through the system, you know, following on from eye of the sky. In, in many ways, you were a trailblazer for the Australian trainers when you took Monopolise over to Hong Kong. Obviously, you've got, you had the connections there uh, with your dad training in Hong Kong. Monopolise is a horse that probably hasn't got a big profile in Australia, but to win two international bowls was an extraordinary achievement. Yeah, now he was a great, another great horse, and uh, we were very fortunate. Dad owned half of him with uh, one of his clients in Hong Kong, so... That was even better, but uh, no, he was a horse that sort of, you know, always needed a bit of luck in his races, and he was son of Rubiton, but he was a great horse, and, uh, you know, he was pretty unlucky here a couple of times. He, you know, just got beaten in a Stradbroke and that, but to go to Hong Kong was absolutely fantastic. All Silent arrived in your life. Um, take us through uh, the process of, A, acquiring All Silent into your uh, stable, and then tell us about the day that he made his debut at $41. Well, he was bought to go to Hong Kong, uh, didn't settle in Hong Kong, so he was sent back to Australia and uh, the owner from Hong Kong said, try him out and see what you think. Well, we trialled him a couple of times and, you know, he, he showed enough for me and I said to Dad, find out what this guy wants to do with the horse and if he wants to race him on in Australia or sell him or move him on somewhere else or just retire him. Anyway, he decided to sell him. So Dad was fortunate enough to be able to pick him up and mm. uh, at a fraction of the price of what he cost as a yearling. And 
then he went on and won his first start in a race. So that was the re reason he had to change a name. He was actually uh, called Shushan Elite. But, right. <laughs> but Dad called him all silent because he wanted to keep it all silent. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a bit of a story there anyway. But anyway, he won his first couple of starts and then we were hit with EI and uh, so he didn't run it for six months after that. And then he really hit his straps and went on starting winning his group ones. Yeah, he was fantastic that the spring that he was able to win. The first day of the Flemington Carnival on the Saturday, last day of the, of the Carnival, it's a 1400 metre race, it's a listed race, and so you went into the Emirates, you must have gone in very confident. Yeah, even though he'd been a, a group two winner going down there, he actually had to win that race to get a start. That's right, yeah. So if he hadn't have won that race, he wouldn't have got a start in the Emirates. So unfortunately, Damien got suspended and Dwayne Dunn took over and uh, he put it beyond doubt. His win in the Padnack Farm was unbelievable. Was it a change in training or why did you switch him back to being a dead set sprinter? Well, we changed him back because we, um, we had Took him down early to Melbourne, his next preparation, next spring, and we ran him in the Gill Guy. Yeah. And he put up such a great performance in the Gill Guy, and um, you know, he'd come from a hopeless position. Yep. We said, geez, this is something we didn't know because it was first time up the straight, and we yep. didn't know if he'd handled the straight. And it's pretty hard from horses coming from Sydney going up the straight for the first time. So when he won that race the way he did, we said, gee, you know, there's another big race coming up end of the carnival, so let's keep him fresh and, and have him ride on the day for the Patnack, and, and he blew him away. And it's that style of racing. He was so popular, wasn't it? It's that style of racing that everyone loves, you know. Go back to last, Nick Hall hanging on for dear life, because when he asked him to go, his acceleration, his, his last 400 metres, his acceleration is unbelievable. Yeah, he's a funny horse. He takes a bit of winding up, but when he really hits his stride, he just he just clicks into another gear and he just swi swaps leads and gets on his right lead and you know he yeah. can really fly. Has he been the same horse since you travelled him to Hong Kong? I think he hasn't. You know, yeah. I and also he came back and went to Dubai. It's yeah. taken a bloody lot out of him um, because he spent a hell of a long time in quarantine and also the seasons. And I think it's sort of it's been quite detrimental to the horse. Um, he just hasn't quite recaptured that form. Another horse I wanted to ask you about is our Egyptian Rain. Well, I went through our Egyptian Rain's career and second in the Lightning, second in All Age, second in Australia Stakes, second in a Doomman 10,000, second in a Dubai Cup, second in an Epsom, and second in a ten, Doomman 10,000. Pull, pull out your hair stuff. Yes. <laughs> Brought me to tears, actually. I think that the day that uh, and then a lot of them were very close finishes. Yeah. I think the day it upset me the most, I think was the day that she was home and hosed in the all age stakes. And she happened to run into a horse called Private Steer who was in unbelievable form. And, yeah. and they came down the outside fence anyway. She was home and hosed everywhere and then Private Steer had just come from nowhere and just dropped out of the ground. And you know, yeah. anyway, bloused to ride on the line. And I thought, oh geez. Cause we'd had a pretty exasperating run of placings in group ones and that. Yeah. And, and we hadn't sort of had a lot going on in the stable at the time, only other than Egyptian rain getting beaten in Group 1, you know. Uh, but, you know, that, I really felt the pain that day. You've been brought up as, as a horseman. Being a businessman and actually running your own business, do you, is that natural to you? Do you find that easy or do you have to lean on others for that? Uh, my wife, uh, she's a big help to us. Um, she runs all the office side of everything and she's got a good racing knowledge and, you know, she handles it all pretty well. and. You know, she's a big, big help to me, and uh, which you need um, because it's a 24-hour, seven-day, around-the-clock sort of business. And you know, people you just don't sort of all of a sudden decide to be a horse trainer. Yeah. You've got to really love it and sort yeah. of want to do it. So you know, so you know, you need all the help you can get. You've been uh, born and bred into this industry. Are we going to see you? Are you a, a long-termer? Are we going to see you around for a long, long time yet, or you'll get to a point? Uh, where you'll say enough is enough and uh, and go sail off into the night? Um, I don't know too many horse trainers that retire. <laughs> um, I think that uh, you're always looking for your next good horse. So I think you've just got to assess it as you go along. Um, I'd like to think that, um, you know, I'd still like time to be able to travel the world and that, you know, rather than be a horse trainer until 80 years old. So, um, you know, Bart's in a great job. So. You know, he's still kicking along there, so, you know, if I, got, if I decide to go that way, I hope I'm as fit as what he is.
This program proudly brought to you by Centibet. No other bookie offers a tote guarantee on your fixed odds bets.